Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. And for today's video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at one of my selected lectures from my best selling 10 and a half hour introduction to information security management course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, we're going to take an introductory look at vulnerability assessments. Now, vulnerability assessments, what are they? Well, we're going to take a look at a couple of definitions on this slide. And then in the next couple of slides, we're going to go over a couple of different high level processes that talk about walking through an actual vulnerability assessment. And then in the next section, we're actually going to do a live demo of a couple of the tools that we talk about in this video. So the first thing that I want to talk about from a definition perspective is the NIST Special Publication 853 Revision 4. And the reason we're looking at this is because NIST puts together their special publications, the 800 series, as information security white papers and processes and procedures for the U.S. federal government to follow. But also a lot of private industry companies also follow NIST as best practices as well. So let's go ahead and let's read through this definition. So NIST states that a vulnerability assessment, and I simply just have it listed as VA, which you'll see that on some of the future slides, just so I don't have to type it out for the sake of space on the slide. But a vulnerability assessment is the systematic examination of an information system or a product to determine the adequacy of the security measures that are in place on it, to also identify any security deficiencies within that information system or product, and to also to provide data from which to predict the effectiveness, and we'll just highlight this part, the effectiveness of proposed security measures. And then lastly, to confirm the adequacy of such measures after implementation. Now, I know that was quite lengthy and it talks about a lot here. We're looking at the adequacy of security measures. We're looking to identify security deficiencies, which we simply just call vulnerabilities. We're looking at the potential effectiveness of proposed security measures. And then lastly, we're looking at the long-term adequacy of measures that we put in place after we implement them. So that's what NIST defines it as, very lengthy. Now, a very short definition for you from a beginner's perspective. Well, we're essentially, we're just performing a risk assessment to identify vulnerabilities on our information systems that house our data to determine if they could potentially be exploited by any sort of a risk threat. That's a very short definition. So the end goal is to scan our network, scan our systems, perform an assessment on them, identify potential vulnerabilities, determine what those are, and see if they could potentially be exploited by people that want to potentially exploit our systems. Now let's take a look at a couple of ways to look at vulnerability assessments. So the first one that we're going to take a look at is by SANS. And SANS is a nonprofit research organization that trains people on information security. They also provide certifications. They have a lot of best practices and white papers that people follow. So I wanted to take a look at their very basic three-phase cyclical process for a vulnerability assessment. So the first step, of course, within this process is we're going to conduct the assessment. We're going to conduct the vulnerability assessment. That's going to tell us what type of vulnerabilities exist. So that's going to identify in step two the exposures that we have to risk because of vulnerabilities that potentially could be exploited. And then lastly, step three, we take those exposures that we identify and we address them appropriately 
based upon a risk management framework. So we do a risk assessment, we determine what type of controls we need to put in place, we address those exposures, and then we start all over again on an ongoing basis. Because as you know, systems are always evolving, there's always patches and updates, and hardware is changing, software is changing, operating systems are changing. The way that we protect our systems are changing from time to time as well when our potential network architecture changes as well and are also taking a look at our overall risk posture in terms of how much risk we're willing to accept changes as well. So we don't want to do a vulnerability assessment just one time and never go back and do it again. We want to do it on a regular basis. So that's a very simple way of looking at it from SAN's perspective, a simple three-phase cyclical vulnerability assessment process. Now let's actually go one step further. And let's talk about this from a more detailed perspective. Now, this is still very high level. This is not that detailed, but I think it's more than detailed enough for you for a beginner's course on information security management. So let's take a look at this. So step one is always going to be planning. Whenever we're doing any sort of a security assessment, whether it's a vulnerability assessment or a penetration test, which we're going to talk about in this section as well, we always want to plan out the scope of our assessment. We need to determine what systems we are going to scan and what data is going to be scanned as well. So what's off limits for the scan and what is not off limits? What do we need to focus on? Because if we don't know what we need to focus on, then we really don't have a good scope for our assessment. So upper management or maybe our CIO is going to say, well, I want to make sure that you guys are scanning our high risk servers. Those are the ones that are most vulnerable to outside threat agents. So maybe you should focus on those. And if we don't know that, well, maybe we're going to focus on other systems within our network. So that's kind of the whole purpose of planning. So once we determine the scope with planning, then we move to step two, and that's the actual scanning. So with scanning, we're going to perform the actual vulnerability assessment scan or multiple different scans with either one or multiple tools. We may be doing it manually. We may be doing it with an automated tool. And there are multiple different types of tools. Um, if you decide to go into the career path of an ethical hacker, then you're going to learn about all this different stuff. But what we're going to demo in this course are a couple of basic tools. We're going to take a look at Nmap and we're going to take a look at Nessus to help us perform a vulnerability assessment. Step three is the analysis. So after we perform the scanning, these tools are going to give us a list of the vulnerabilities. So we use Nmap to enumerate the network and determine what hosts are on the system. And then we use Nessus to take a bit of a deeper dive. Those two tools combined are gonna give us a list of vulnerabilities. In step three, we take that information and we analyze it. So our next step is to analyze it, review all of these identified vulnerabilities, and then determine their potential impact. And how do we do that? We talked about that earlier in the course. We do risk assessments. So we look at the vulnerability. We look at its potential impact in regards to a negative consequence if it actually is exploited. We perform a risk assessment. And based upon our risk assessment, we determine the appropriate control measures. So remember, there's multiple different types of control measures. So we can mitigate it. We can accept it. We can transfer it and so forth. And then step four, we do the remediation. So once we do the analysis in step three, we're ready to perform the remediation. So based on our risk assessment, we prioritize and we remediate the identified vulnerabilities with the appropriate control measures that we choose. And then step five, what well, we repeat, just like we talked about on the last slide, this is a cyclical process. So even though I have this listed as steps one through five, we actually go all the way back up to step one and we repeat again on a regular basis. So remember, we have to perform these scans on an ongoing regular basis. You just don't do this once when you provision and deploy a system. You do it on a regular basis because new risks are going to pop up, new vulnerabilities are gonna pop up, and we want to be on top of them when they do pop up to make sure that we are remediating them appropriately based upon the level of risk and impact. 
So that's our more detailed look at a vulnerability assessment. Like I said in the next section, we're going to take a look at the Nmap tool. We're also going to take a look at Nessus as well. And these are two primary tools that people use a lot in vulnerability assessments. So if you have any questions, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.